What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am back on the. You know what time it is. What do you mean you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ. So I posted this video showing that Buki assaulted, destroyed, soul snatched tight end from Kansas State. You remember the hit? He lined him up, he sized him up, and he. I mean, it was the most beautiful hit that I had seen all season, and then CD Lamb destroyed Matt Wilson, and I posted that video on Twitter, so you go check that one out, too. But where I'm getting really kind of pissed, where I'm getting really just kind of livid, is we keep talking about how small this kid is. Like, he's 5'9", he's 185, and that's just not big enough for most of y'all that want him to play safety or corner or whatever. But what you don't continue to understand, what I seem to be having a hard time getting across, is that the kid is an absolute baller. I'm tired of having to make this clear to folks. Honestly, it's just the kind of thing that just makes me upset. And if you follow me on the Twitters, RJ underscore Young, you'll see that I am taking zero sass on this. I'm not really interested in hearing your takes about how the dude got injured laying his body out, stomping down a six foot seven, 255 pound tight end. I'm not really interested in hearing how you think the kid should be a better form tackler. Everybody knew that was a highlight reel hit. He made a joke about it later on his Instagram talking about mission failed. And yet here we are in February, still talking about whether or not Buki is going to be a player at the University of Oklahoma. Well, I got news for you. You better hope he is because Buki has consequences far and wide. The kid is an icon in California. What he has been through, the reason that he wears that number 44 jersey, well, you can go look that up. But the fact of the matter is now you got two five-star recruits out of the state of California playing on the defense that ain't pissed a drop. We're still waiting on Caleb Kelly to do whatever it is Caleb Kelly's gonna do. And we're still waiting on Buki to do whatever it is Buki's gonna do. But I'm telling you right now, if you don't get anything out of Buki, you're gonna start to see California recruiting just light up. You need to be rooting for this kid. You need to be rooting for all the kids, but that's besides the point. Because if this doesn't get better in the next couple of years, you're going to see it reflected in recruiting. Now, I know that Lincoln just pulled a rabbit out of a hat and got a kid out of modern day for the 2019 class to play safe. And I know he got DGW earlier last year. But you know who ain't come? Chris Steele. You know who you want to come? Justin Flo and his little brother. You got one linebacker out of the state of California last year. That's Jonathan Perkins. You'd like to get some more. Remember that Tony Jefferson came out of California. So did Brennan Clay. And so did Joe Mixon. Now tell me, which one of those guys did you expect to be really, really good when they got here? Okay, which one of those guys ended up being a player in the NFL? Two of them. And only one of them plays defense. And Tony Jefferson was undrafted. Had 119 tackles from the safety position. Undrafted. Now I also know you got a new defense coordinator. And you got a new scheme. And nobody really knows what position Buki's going to play come August 31st when you play Houston. But whatever position it is, safety, corner, friggin' water boy, you better hope that dude turns into an all Big 12 performer and quite honestly approaches all America. Because now you don't get to say you're not recruiting the kids that you want anymore. You got a five-star corner who absolutely wants to be here. It's time for everybody to get on that kid's side. And speaking of getting on kids' sides, since when do we all hate college football free agency? Now it's not really free agency because that would imply that the kids are getting paid a living wage and they're not. You can take your scholarship money and you can shove it if you want to or just pay the kids the amount of the scholarship money because they're honestly worth a lot more when they play football, especially at places like the University of Oklahoma. But I digress. College football free agency is good because nobody wants a kid that can't play, so it's not like kids are going to be transferring who aren't any good. And you're going to make excuses for keeping that kid on your roster if you think he can play. You're also going to do the job of keeping everybody accountable if you are a coach because we see coaches jump to bigger gigs, better gigs all the time. And yet the kid can't jump without some sort of penalty called a year without playing football. Now anybody who knows this, like if you explain to somebody who was an alien, didn't watch American football, they'd be like, that's not right. It's because it ain't. That's why the transfer portal was invented. Because none of this is right. And we're approaching getting it to right. But for me, we need more college football free agency until we can come up with some way to pay these kids a living wage, which means taking down the NCAA. But that's another video, and that's not what we're here for. Deuces.